Welcome back to the tower mowing project. We've got another new attachment to show you today. This is a flail mower. It's an offset flail mower. We'll talk more about it and answer a lot of your questions as we go along, so stick with us. For now, we're just gonna mow. Our first two episodes were on the other side of the tower. So this is the first time we've been on this side of the tower. There's a lot more grass that's not so grown up here. We thought this would be a good place to try this flail mower. Uh-oh, that doesn't sound good at all. Before you even get a peek in there, I can tell you the good news is that it'll tip up sideways. Much easier access. If you get in a situation like this where you get some PTO attachment, you get something wrapped around, make sure you switch your PTO to, well, mid, so that this one isn't on, and that allows at least a free roll, okay? There's plenty of other challenges you have to getting out something like this. But if your PTO is stuck, essentially in gear, then all your challenges are just going to be worse. One step at a time here. It's a race now to see whether I can get it out before Christy gets back with the wire cutter. I think I may make it. It's kind of humiliating to her, isn't it? But, I wasn't sure. Thought we were gonna have to have them. Who knows, we may need them again next round. I'm still not wondering if that's gonna... I know, that's why I wasn't eager to do it. Ugh. See what I mean? You'd have to get it right at the base of it. Get more leverage, so... You can see this was not gonna be easy. No, you're stronger than I am. Yeah, but it was not gonna be pleasant. Christy, I prefer mowing to removing barbed wire from the mower. Yeah, but I've had fun driving Allie back and forth to the house. Oh, well, sometimes you do get the better end of the deal. Yep. <laughs> We're testing several different things at the same time, so maybe it'd be good for me to kind of break them down. Uh, just some of the different things we're testing. Let's, let's start with one of the obvious, and that is we're testing a flail mower. So the flail mower spins in a, you might say a reverse direction if you were thinking of a tiller. It spins toward the front. The second thing we're testing is the offset concept, an offset flail mower or an offset any mower, right? The third thing we're testing is this combination on the 1025R. So let's work through some of those. Starting with the flail mower, it runs in a reverse rotation. Think of it as like a reverse tine tiller. So it spins to the forward, trying to lift that grass up uh, as, you, as you get into it. Some advantages are it's safer. It tends to keep things in the chamber longer than a brush hog rotary cutter type mower. You don't see near as much stuff flying out as you do of a regular rotary cutter. And that gives us our next advantage, which is the results, you get more mulch, right? So it, it, it breaks up the grass, it, it, it leaves a, just a, a little bit finer mulch. Uh, it seems to spread it pretty evenly as well, so that's a, an, another advantage. A third advantage that I'm not really showing you here uh, very well, I suppose, is you can cut lower with this mower, at least in a lot of scenarios. Now, it's got a roller underneath here, and I've lowered that roller all the way uh, into its, essentially, its highest cutting setting. My understanding is that if you use a lower cutting setting, that it will do a better job of cutting. I'm just a little nervous out here on this particular job. I don't know what's out here. Just ran into some barbed wire. What a mess. Maybe that's a disadvantage. Boy, that barbed wire got wrapped around there. It was very difficult to get out. 
yes, it'll get wrapped around a brush mower too, a brush rotary cutter. So I don't know if that's an advantage or a disadvantage, but hey, it happened. That's what real world is. That's what we're doing in this kind of a job. This is a four and a half foot flail mower. I would say this is about the right width for a subcompact tractor. Now I'm talking about the flail mower itself. Let's move from there to the concept of the offset mower, okay? For a moment, I'm going to kind of ignore the fact that it's a flail. I'm just gonna talk about the offset mechanism. Now you can get this particular mower with a direct three-point attach on it without the offset feature. If you're gonna to try to use this attachment on a 1025R or a Kubota BX, I don't necessarily recommend this offset feature. The 1025R just won't hardly pick it up. Uh, the BX probably would be very close. You'd have to put a lot of weight on the front end. And there's another big reason. I'll get to that. So the offset mechanism allows you to mow off to the side as we've got it configured here. Now, if I were to mow around in a, in a circle or square, you could always leave it offset. I was going back and forth for a couple reasons. I wanted to see if you could tell the difference in cut. Did the tire tracks in front of the flail mower make a big difference? And so far, my observation is it didn't make a big difference. Now, every type of grass, every scenario is different. There's a lot of, of dead grass in here, and there's a lot of green grass growing up. I thought it would be enough that the tire tracks matching it down would have an impact. We'll try to test that with a single spindle brush mower uh, at a, some point in the future, hopefully near future, to see if the tire tracks have an impact on it. So, I didn't see any negative impact of having the flail mower right behind the tractor. Positives. By being able to reach out like this, I was able to trim under some things that I couldn't have reached uh, any other way. Uh, partially because the ROPS is up under these uh, uh, guide wires here and, and under some tree branches, things like that. Overall, this is too big for a subcompact tractor, this, this concept. The flail mower, perfect size. The offset mechanism is too big. Let me talk one more aspect of the offset mechanism. You see these two hydraulic cylinders. And remember, I have no rear SCVs on my tractor, okay? I only have the mid SCV with the loader bracket. That's why I don't have the loader on today. Let's take a closer look at that. I've got a set of four hoses here that route the mid SCV to the rear SCV. <clears throat> this means that my joystick is what is controlling those two cylinders back there. I plumbed it such that in and out with the lever here was in and out with the mower and pull back towards me up and down, like with the boom, up and down is up and down with the tilt of it. Now you can get these hoses um, at your local hydraulic place. This set of hoses works well for you if you want to do something only occasional. Notice they sit right here in the floorboard. I don't have them routed under the tractor in any way. Uh, this is something I would take off entirely. I would take all four of these hoses off when I put the loader back on. I'm working with an online vendor to provide a set of these hoses with the appropriate fittings on each end in a kit. The kit will consist of one pair of hoses effectively routing one SCV to the rear. We expect this kit to be about $120. You could use it for a hydraulic dump on a wagon or trailer hydraulic scarifiers on a box blade, or a hydraulic lift mechanism on a pull type attachment, for example, the tough line disc we had on Johnny Five the other day. When the kit's ready, we'll add a link to the description below. Meanwhile, leave a comment if you'd be interested in one of these. This particular offset flail mower is from Machio. It's what they're calling their weekend warrior line. You can get it at agfolks.com. Use code TTWT, you get a 5% discount. You can get it in the offset configuration like this, in a four foot size, four and a half, I don't know whether it's five, five and a half, they've got several different sizes. You can get the same sizes, essentially the same cutter without the offset. This is the four and a half foot version. The four foot version would be a little bit lighter. Since I'm running this on a 1025R, you probably could run the four foot version on a 1025R. If you've got a pond bank you wanna mow over, uh, steep ditches that you can, you can be flat with your tractor and mow, you can probably run this. Of course, you'll have to have the hose kit we just talked about. But in general, this is really pushing it for the size of the tractor. Now, this particular flail mower is not quick hitch compatible. This big bar that they've got here is wider than a typical quick hitch and the top link connection is much taller. Given the weight, I would just as soon have it as close as possible. 
So I'm not sure that even a Pat's Easy Change or something like that would be a very good idea on a subcompact tractor. You get up to the large frame 2R uh, or the small L tractors or maybe the B2650, uh, you might be able to handle this a little better. Is it tipsy when I have that offset mower way out there? If I'm on flat ground, I really don't notice it. I thought maybe there would be, it'd be so light here on this left-hand side that I would just feel like it was, you know, wanting to tip all the time. Didn't notice that. The only time I noticed it was, was when I had Christy, the camera girl, up here on, on this side, and we were kind of on the ditch bank. And... Well, what are you saying? <laughs> that I'm heavy? <laughs> no. Am, I'm heavier since the quarantine. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Aren't we all? <laughs> yeah. I was actually surprised. Uh, the, the, the flail, I mean, it's a long way back there and a long way out there. Um, so it handles it better than I thought. But it's still, it's, it's right on the edge. I, I would have liked to have tried a four foot instead of a four and a half foot, uh, but they didn't have one in stock at the time. And so this is, this is what they sent. Uh, we'll probably try it again on Johnny too at some point to see, you know, just how well uh, it handles it. I'm, I'm at this point certain it'll be fine. Uh, in fact, if I was probably going with a Johnny 2, I might even go with a 5-foot. Let's talk about the cut quality a little bit. I think it looks pretty good. And I think it is closer to the ground than what I would have tried to do with a, a rotary cutter. I just, I wouldn't have tried to cut something this short in a single pass. The roller right on the back of the flail mower gives me a lot more confidence that it's not going to gouge. It, it's, you know, from front to back of the mower, it's only probably 12 to 15 inches. And, you know, the back 4 or 5 inches is that roller. Right, so there's not a lot of room when you're going forward for it to gouge. It would have to be a pretty steep, you know, hump that you were encountering. I don't think I've had it gouge at all. I, I may have had to pick up a rock or two uh, when we were mowing the ditch bank there at the, uh, the house, uh, but I, I don't think I've had much trouble with that at all. Now, where I'm standing, we were driving that way with the mower behind us. So where I'm standing and everything right behind me is a pass where we were mowing behind us. The next pass to the right, to your left, is where we were mowing with it offset. Quite frankly, I see no difference. Uh, I'm surprised at that, but I, I see no difference. So that would be a vote for being able to run the flail mower right behind the tractor without any you know, risk of, of having that mash down grass. Again, we probably need to test this on some other um, types of grass to see if we experience that elsewhere. Also, when we're not running in quite as thick a grass, I may lower the cut just a little more to see what we can do on that. I'll be a little more confident, for, for instance, in our yard. Uh, there's just so many obstacles here, I'm, I'm not confident. Okay, remember, this is the strip where we were mowing directly behind the tractor. The next strip over, we were mowing beside the tractor. See, some of these, well, they're really heavy. They're trees. They're just really small trees have come back up. Uh, ouch, that's a briar of some sort. These were under the tractor track. All three or four of these that I see, in fact, essentially every one that I see down this particular uh, swath is behind the tractor track. Some of this really stiff stuff does come back up after the, the first cutting. You don't see that with any kind of mower, but I'm just trying to point it out. Just wanted to point out how I trimmed around this tree. Promise you I haven't pulled anything by hand or stomped anything over. We did that trimming right there just with the mower. I could go up to it and I could pull the mower to me and push it back out. And so I think it took me, uh, I, I came from two directions to do that trimming. I was pretty impressed with that. From an operating perspective, there's a couple of things uh, that I needed to watch. And the first is this slot right here. This is the up and down cylinder, raises it up, lets it down. You need to have this right in the middle of the slot at all times. The reason is that gives you that flotation. So this essentially allows it to float downward this much and upward this much. So if it does encounter something upward, you might you have to move it in a little bit so that it can flex a little bit more, right? So that one I kind of continually adjusted if there was any sort of a grade, angled grade that I was working on. In the flat ground, pretty well I just put it out here roughly in the middle and, and it kind of stayed there. This slot is similar. You lower your three-point hitch until the top link resides right in the middle of that slot. That gives you plenty of flex front and back. That one is hard for me to see. 
I wish there was a way to have some sort of an indicator or something. Maybe I need that camera system again. I need to be able to see that. So I just kind of uh, had to guess at that a little bit because right behind my head, I just, I couldn't get around there very easily. I think there's our barbed wire damage right there. There and there, a little bit of scratches in there. That's just the way it's gonna be. Folks, I hope this has been helpful for kind of a first introduction to a flail mower and an offset flail mower on a subcompact tractor. You won't see an offset flail mower on a subcompact tractor very often. I don't know of any on YouTube other than this one at this point. We'll be back to this tower project, tower mowing, tower cleanup project with more attachments in the future. So don't go away. Press that subscribe button if you would. Really appreciate that. The like, it helps us. And you know what? We really appreciate having you guys watch our videos. It, it means an enormous amount to us. We wouldn't be able to do this if it weren't for you guys watching us, right? I mean, I know that sounds simple, but we recognize that and we really appreciate it. So thanks for watching everybody. We'll see you next time on Tractor Time with Tim.